How many people on the panel have lost some or know of someone who has died of COVID? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I do. Yes. Yeah. And Al Ellen, can you can you share? Do you do you feel like sharing your your story? I know that you, you were talking about having really a very difficult time with this. Um, so yeah, we. Uh, I guess I was at a dinner on March 3rd, one of the last suppers, so to speak. Um, and I sat in between two men um, that were dear friends of mine. And on March 23rd, one of them passed away. He was 63. And he had a short illness, uh, respiratory, and then went into cardiac arrest um, and died pretty quickly. And no underlying health issues. And then the other gentleman who sat on the other side of me actually was Italian, went back to Milan the next day and is actually still in the hospital, mm -hmm. passed away um, and was in ICU and is out of ICU and somewhat recovered, but not yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then I lost mm -hmm. another friend of mine um, who it's not diagnosed COVID, but had other underlying issues. Um, and then I run an artist housing project and we lost two residents um, who both had underlying health issues, one of which was not diagnosed COVID. We think it complicated things. The other was a COVID fatality um, mm. and contracted mm. it actually at a rehab center um, and then ended up dying at NYU hospital. Um, so multiple fatalities. Um, but how are you, Ellen? Because if you're between these two, have you been tested? I was not. I was sick in mid-March um, and had a fever and headache, did not lose my sense of smell, you know, did not, was not eligible for a test, actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it was before yeah. either That's of the time. people I knew passed, um, and uh, just took care of myself. And, you know, I'm, as, I'm pretty convinced, but you never know. Mm -hmm. So I was just careful, um, and uh, I'm okay. D so. D Denise? Are you in Florida now or are you in New York? I am. No, so I'm what's going on down there with uh, the state that, you know, seems to have a different idea about how they're dealing with uh, COVID response? Well, <laughs> where, I am, where I am, everything is still shut down, very much so. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be opening tomorrow is my mm -hmm. understanding, like the golf courses. So I'm in West Palm Beach and um, everything here is pretty uh, under lock lockdown you know uh, essentially so what you can do is you know i have the gift of being able to go outside and walk and you know maintain that great distance between myself and the other people so i i, I am blessed i i'm seeing this as an opportunity to stop and take a look at my life that in many ways was like a little rat running on a wheel mm -hmm. and realizing that there is a gift and there is you know and a light at the end of the tunnel. And I have spent a lot of my time thinking about what life is all about and the spirituality aspect of it. And I've been donating money and time um, to organizations that need it, in particular, like Feed America, you know, all of these um, food based organizations, because I see the hunger and I see those brown people waiting in line when you, you know, turn on the news and you hear of all these people being turned away, it does something to you. So if you have the ability to donate, whether you stock those food shelters or whatever, I, I think this is the time when we're being called. But to you do know, something. what I'm hearing though is it COVID hit you where you were. For instance, we're I'm blessed, you know. I have a job. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when I, uh, I was walking down Eastern Parkway the other day, and I've never seen a food line like I saw at Rogers Avenue. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. You know, yes. it's, it's the idea that this was not something that I expected to experience, yeah. but we are here. But I wanted to go back to this idea of loved ones dying and not being able to have the typical rituals that we have. And I wanted to point this to you, Lisa, in terms of 
what does that do or does it do or does it depend on who the people are that surround these people? I mean, I, to not be able to say goodbye in the way that you want to say, how does one heal from that? Because I can imagine that being traumatic. In right. Some respects, that you don't get to say goodbye to a husband or a wife or your oh, grief. I just, you know. Well, it's not just that you don't say goodbye. You can't even take care of them. So we right, to nothing. Them, right, nothing. There's a right. level of caregiving, which is what goes back to the melancholia that you were mm -hmm. talking about, right? Is that it's about the caregiving in the very beginning. Like there's a, there's a ritual that we have even before that. Like when people are sick, mm -hmm. everybody comes together. People are calling, checking on right. you. People are coming by. People are at your house. Some people are sleeping over. Like none of that can happen. You go into the hospital, no one can visit you. Even if you, no one can visit you, even if you don't have COVID, because you just can't get in. Right. And people have died even outside of that, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, there's this, there's this process even before even that, if this person passes. And so there is a definite loss. For people, we call it an ambiguous loss when someone has died and you haven't really seen them or, like, they dis it's kind of like they disappeared. Yeah, right? It's like I they disappeared. It's like they yeah. disappeared in some way. And even your funeral, right? So I've had some people who have passed um, and their funeral process is totally different. People can't come from other places. People can't come to participate in the, even the funeral rites. I would say one of the hardest things, I'm sorry, Lisa, to cut you off. Okay, is actually, it took us 18 hours to have remains picked up. Yes. 18 yeah. hours. And then we did a Zoom near-term memorial, and then we planned a larger memorial for July, and that may have to be put off because we don't even think <laughs> it'll happen in July. First right. of all, no one's going to be getting on a plane yeah. in yeah. July, right. you know? Right. And it'll be a year from up. July, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, you okay. know, one of the things I'm just built, picking up on Denise's point about um, what she's learning about herself mm -hmm. and what she's learning from this experience. I have a dear friend whose grandmother uh, passed away from COVID at 90. Uh, her grandmother was in her home and she had to put her grandmother in an ambulance and have her grandmother taken to the hospital knowing she all too well that her. that was the last time that she was going to see her mm -hmm. and that she wouldn't be, at the ho be able to be at the hospital to comfort her. But in... Um, dialoguing with her she you know she expressed that she was in a good place mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she knew that she and her grandmother shared a very special love mm -hmm. a very deep relationship and she knew that her grandmother even if dying alone knew that she was not alone and so yeah. the point that i make in this is that one of the things we can take away from this given that we can't control every situation and right. frankly True. i don't mean to minimize the situation but people pass away every day right. mm -hmm. without yeah. being able to be there right. and be supportive right. and be able to Alone. hold. And so the takeaway is, what do you do right. in the moments while right. you're living right. to show and express love, right? right? Mm -hmm. So that if you can't be there right. in that last right. minute or that right. last hour, that right. person still knows they were loved. Right. And you, you love that right. person. And well, Jennifer... Yeah, I was going to share that um, I actually lost my significant other at the very early stages of COVID-19. And I went through the most extreme anxiety that I ever had in my life because it took 10 hours to get from New York to California. Everyone was in on, wearing their masks. A lot of people didn't show up to the ceremony. I was, we were afraid to hug people, but it was the last of, you know, being able to actually gather together. And I felt such extreme anxiety over the loss, plus you know, not being able to feel comfortable because you don't know who's in that room. And I can say, I agree with you with finding peace um, in the situation in that you can show, pay your respects in your own way. The people who couldn't come, they, they actually had filmed the entire ceremony, which at first kind of struck me as odd, but I realized the severity of the times that we're in and that some people really wanted to celebrate the life of, of what I felt was an amazing, amazing man. And I think we do need to find alternate ways and to count our blessings during these times, regardless of the loved ones we have. Right. Some have right. their families, their spouses, some right. don't. And yeah, that's right. okay. Yeah. 